Hello everyone, it's Amy from the Wakelet team here. Thank you all so much for joining us for another wonderful session that we have coming up. Um, you've joined us for um, the magic of Wakelet in your classroom and we'll be joined by the Merrills, Joe and Kristen Merrill, who will be speaking uh, about using Wakelet in your classroom and sharing some awesome ideas with you all. Uh, it's so great to see so many of you from all over already. Um, it's wonderful, we've got, rep uh, we've got people from Malaysia, Poland, Greece, um, all over, which is so amazing to see. Um, so I'll hand you over in just a moment, but just a reminder, um, you will be able to get a certificate for your um, participation in this webinar. Um, we'll share a link at the end. Um, it will come up in the chat, so you'll be able to fill that in and get a certificate and a stamp for your passport. Um, we'll also be um, sharing the details of the competition that we have running throughout the week. So throughout, if you have favorite moments from this session, any session, anything that you've taken a part in, um, please uh, share that out onto Twitter, um, tag us in that and hashtag Wakelet Community Week. We've got some awesome prizes up for grabs, uh, including swag packs um, and a once in a lifetime trip to ISTE as well. Um, so for now, without further ado, I will pass over to Joe and Kristen, um, who will be leading the session. Um, so excited for this one, as I just said with you guys. Um, but yeah, over to you guys. Have fun well thank you so thank much thank you Amy. so much wow, this is amazing we are so excited to be here with you guys today thank you to wakelet for having us and it's so awesome to see so many people that are logging on oh my gosh the, the philippines russia illinois new york dubai oh, shout out to our friend carrie and thank you so hey, much Karen. for that comment we really appreciate oh that. my goodness we're so excited to get started and more importantly we are so excited to just share our love for wakelet with you and the magic that it really can um have in your classroom yeah so let's get it started so uh, my name is Joe. Oh, let's see. Hold on. We had it ready and now it stopped. Hold on one second. Right there. Let's see. Sorry about that, guys. I had it and it must have stopped. So <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm Joe and I am a first grade teacher. And I'm Kristen. I'm a fourth grade teacher. And we are the authors of the interactive class series. But more importantly, we are parents, we are teachers, and we're Wakelet users. Right, and this year, Wakelet proved to be one of the most crucial tools for us to use in the classroom as we kind of went through that pandemic time. And even now as we're tr transitioning on, it's really important to think about how can we continue to use Wakelet as we move on from here? Because I think everybody's kind of at a turning point, so it's important for us to kind of understand what's next. Yeah, we had this really unique um, experience of being in-class teachers and virtual teachers all year long. We still have virtual and in-person students. So we've had this really fun, fun year yeah, fun. <laughs> of getting to see what tools you can use while remote learning, but also can be completely applicable in the classroom, you know, with students that are there every day in person. Yeah. So we're going to take you through a whole bunch of different things. And the first thing we're going to talk about are the integrations and which tools work really well with Wakelet. Now you may or may not know this. If you're using Wakelet, <laughs> you probably already do, but there's lots of tools built right into Wakelet, right within those couple of dots there. I don't know what, what do you call that? It's not the hamburger. The, because it's the like magic orange. dots. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever it might be. The phone pad? I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyways, so you have uh, Twitter, you have Flipgrid. It, the Flipgrid feature is am amazing because you can record a Flipgrid Shorts video right within your collection. You can add YouTube links, even access to your Google Drive and your OneDrive. So lots of easy ways to in integrate and embed right within that. I love this because Wakelet doesn't only work with one thing. So you're allowed to take whatever you already are comfortable with, whatever you already use, and just seamlessly add Wakelet into that toolbox that you have. And as you can see, it, it spans all sorts of different types of, of like applications. So I don't know, that's just one of my favorites. It's so easy and quick too. Um, now, how can we go about using some of these things? Well, one of the most important uh, integrations is Immersive Reader. Now, Immersive Reader will translate any document that you have into hundreds of languages. And so it's really, really neat and it's easy for uh, users, especially students or families at home, to use Immersive Reader right within Wakelet. It's a simple click of that speaker icon that you see and then any of the text that's on there can be translated. One of the things for us, especially when we talk about interactive classrooms and things for students and teachers, is accessibility. And Wakelet makes anything that you put within a collection or a space accessible. So not only is it accessible to students or families who speak other languages, it's accessible to primary students who may not be able to read everything yet, but you want to expose them to things, or students who might be struggling readers. There's so many different um, ways that Immersive Reader works on this spectrum, but 
ultimately it makes things accessible, which is why we love it. Yeah, absolutely. So then let's talk a little bit about sharing. So you have lots of different options when you're trying to get your content out to your students or your families. Uh, there's a really simple way to integrate or to share out from Google Classroom. You simply hit that Google Classroom icon and you put it right into your class. It's very easy. You can see there's other options there as well. You have one for Microsoft Teams. It works kind of the same way. You click on that Teams icon. But sometimes having it right there center, <laughs> center for the kids to see is really important when you're working with little. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit more about Teams and some of those other special features in a second. But also, you love this one. I did. I wanted to share this because I feel like often um, when we get really familiar with a tool, you sometimes use it in the same way over and over again, and you forget some of the features that it has. So Wakelet this year, um, was something that my team used to share documents um, for planning. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But one of my favorites is the PDF export, the ability to take a PDF and add that and curate that. Because I'm going to be honest, and let's be honest together, not all of us were digital natives. So a lot of the things that we may have were on paper. Or maybe you wanted to take something from paper and reinvent it. But you still wanted to have that document there. And it's I may even have some paper things that I don't even have the master file for anymore. So having that PDF, being able to export it and have it there to share is so much easier than coming to like a planning meeting and be like, hey, who wants to like, you know, have this file, we'll make copies for everybody. Or like if the office sends something or a letter home, you can easily just send that and upload that to parents or however you're curating, whether it's a website or a newsletter. I just love that feature. And I think it's one that's overlooked that teachers and, and users may not always yeah, pay attention to. Yeah, I think people to. see that PDF option there and they kind of skip over it mm -hmm. because they think to themselves, why, why would I need this right now? That's but, him. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about littles because I'm a first grade teacher, so I'm constantly looking for ways that I can help out build my littles with using Wakelet. And if you uh, use this hack, this can definitely come in quite handy. When you're setting up your Wakelet page, if you're using it as a class website, you can use emojis right within your section titles. And when you do that, it's going to give that like trigger sign to your, your students, especially if they're young. It's a picture to, clue. To know. Yeah, it's like a picture clue. And so it makes it really easy for them to identify the different sections if they can't necessarily read the words. I've seen people use emoji hacks for um, organizing their Google Drives or their desktops. It's the same thing within Wakelet. And let's be real, students, our kids nowadays, speak in emojis. So they're probably going to, even if they can read, find the emoji faster than they're going to find the words because they're really good at like reading over things. So it's a really fun hack to, especially if you use Wakelet a lot and you have yeah. a lot of different things. On and there. there's lots of different websites that you can copy and paste emojis. Mm -hmm. Emoji copy is one that we That's love. one of our favorites. There's also lots of Chrome extensions. So find those and check those yeah, out. Yeah, make it, make it fun. Let's talk a little bit about differentiation because no tool does it better than Wakelet when it comes to differentiation. And so when you are working with a group of students, not everyone's going to be learning at the same place at the same time. We might need to review a little bit more in one area. We might need to excel or challenge in another. And Wakelet allows us to do this very easily. I love this too because as a teacher, um, when you're on a team together and you're working and you're sharing, it's so much easier to be able to share things out if you can differentiate them because not alone, let alone two kids are like two classes aren't alike. So you can create on Wakelet. You can I don't know. I tend to always like to start with my extensions, my really high lessons, and then build it all in. And then you can copy that collection and you can edit it out. Maybe I don't want them to do all of these activities, or maybe I want to change the directions on these activities. And then I want to copy it again. And I want to change it out again for my ELL learners. But by, by copying the collection, it's, it's pretty quick. And, and you already know what you want to put in there. Or you can have teachers um, all work together and change them all out. But it's so simple. It's like three clicks. Yeah, and you can also plan out a little bit too. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can just label them different weeks uh, or if you want to retitle them, you can, you know, build up a, a backstock almost of your different uh, your different centers and that way you can plan out for a week or so and it's really handy. You know what else I really like? I really like how it all looks the same. Yeah. So then when the kids, regardless of how you share it with them, when they go in, um, the banners, the same, like it all looks the same to them. So there's not that um, exclusiveness. Like the kids don't really realize, especially if they're working on tasks, that they're doing different things. And if you can keep the lesson somewhat the same or with the same book or story, it really, um, it really helps. I like that. Yeah. And now Teams, I said we were going to bring it up. <laughs> uh, it's really easy to differentiate in Teams. That's actually how we went about doing it this year. So 
as you all know, we went through a very difficult pandemic period yeah. where we were doing remote learning. Um, and we had some kids actually in our situation were learning at home, but then we also had some that were in the classroom. And so we really had to make sure that the kids that were at home were having the same experience as those that were in the classroom. And so we tried to plan very strategically on how we could do that. And Wakelet really helped us with that. This team integration allowed us to take those differentiated centers, as you can see. In Create your own picture. tab right there for the kids to find. Yeah, you, you, each each channel on um, each group has its own channel on Teams. And then we just added a tab up to the top on each channel with the Wakelet collection uh, that had the centers on there. And so we would just go in and swap out those Wakelet links every week as uh, we went along throughout the year. And this was how our kids accessed their centers. So even if a child had to you know, be out for a couple of days, they would still be able to access the same material and content that they would have if they were in the classroom. I just love to, when we talked at the beginning about the toolbar in Wakelet and how there's all these features, there's a text one, guys. And by typing in what they're supposed to be doing, there's that beautiful immersive reader symbol and it's going to yeah. read it to the kids. So, you know, I'm sure in our classes aren't the same, you know, the only ones where you read directions, you go through everything and then like you literally finish and they're like, I don't know what to do. And so the ability to have it read to them, again, that may be the, accessibility just to have directions read aloud again it may not be something super massive but i just think love how streamlined it is how quick and then just change it each week yeah and that's a great point you know because if you do have a child that was at home we wanted to make sure that they were able to stay on task independently and so you know working at home is obviously a much more of a challenge to working in the classroom because there's lots of different distractions but having all this set up the way that it is really gave the students even a, for in first grade an advantage because they were able to you know go about doing the work to independently and not have to depend on an adult those integrations lead to the differentiation right now let's talk a little bit about embedding because as awesome as Wakelet is, it works so well with these other different tools that you can put it in places that it's you may like, not normally expect. It's like that expect. perfect triangle, integrations, differentiation, and embedding, and they all kind of work together. Yeah, and it's really easy to do, so let's talk about some of the places that you can drop it. This was such a game changer. Um, I have to admit, Canvas was new for me. This is something our district took on with, we were going to take it on anyway, took it on a little bit faster and integrated a little bit faster with you know the pandemic. Um, and with Littles, Canvas was a little challenging, and so anything that could embed and be right there so they didn't have to go outside or go into a module was really, really helpful. And it was so simple. And I, I just I can't get over how streamlined and how nice it looks. Yeah, I mean, you literally, it's just several clicks. You drop it in, and then it's all there. And the best thing about this, too, is that you can always go back and revisit it. And so when we were embedding onto Canvas, which happened to be our LMS, you know, we were able to then uh, go back a couple of days if we needed to to review. If we wanted to add more information to it, it was very easy and it was all right there in one place. Yeah, because once you embed it, if you edit it or add to it, it still stays the same. Right. It's almost like that live update. So yeah. super helpful. Now, also, you can do this with OneNote. So the Wakelet and OneNote embed is very cool. All you have to do is copy the Wakelet URL and paste it right into OneNote and bam it's all of a sudden Beautiful. embedded and it's live. What's really cool about that too is again, if you continue to edit it, it's going to update it and it's going to share it and put it on for uh, you. I love whenever see. you can save a link and it just stays the same. You don't have to go back and keep adding it. I think that's, I, I always am the one that's like refresh. And so the, not having to refresh and having it right there um, really is what you want when you're working with students. You don't want to put things in that are stagnant, that are stale that just sit there and, and there they say the same. I love anything that I can do with my kids in real time. My kids at home are working, my kids in person are working. Even if my kids are sitting right next to each other, they're all getting a chance to, to add. And like you always say, it brings that kid from the back up to the front. Everyone gets a chance. You're not having to raise your hand and only call on six people. And then it's live updating. And, and for some kids, that's more manageable than having to speak up in front of everybody. Yeah, I also like how this can go over the top with your differentiation because if you're if you're assigning this to a group of students, then what you can do is you can have them adding content right onto the OneNote project as well. We're going to talk a little bit about how they can do that with a Wakelet here in a little bit. And you can add more than one on your right. OneNote because yes. OneNote's infinite. So if you wanted to put things over time, curate things over time, I'm thinking even as a planning aspect of keeping things in, you know, depending on how you share with your team or your school, it's a great way 
way to like curate your curations and have it where everyone can see it, not just in your account. Yeah. There's another really popular embed, and this mm -hmm. one is Wakelet and Buncee. Now, this one is one of our personal favorites because mm -hmm. there's so much creation with, with within Buncee. You can do so much with it, kind of like with Wakelet, and it's really cool when those two things work well together. So you can design full Buncee's links, everything. Yeah, like a digital and, homepage, and yeah. then it's right in within your Wakelet, but then you have all the other features like video and text and that you can create a whole lesson, you can create a whole unit. Um, but I just love how Buncee has all those live embeds and really works right within the, the Wakelet. Yeah, and even if you're doing something simple, like what you're looking at right here, this was an assignment that my kids had a couple weeks ago. Um, it was a fun assignment. They were talking about where they would take a friend on vacation. And so they created the whole thing in Buncee and then uh, they went ahead and put it all onto a Wakelet collection so we could see everybody's different <laughs> movement. I love yeah, it. So it was really fun. Um, and you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg with this because you can so share it out to parents too. Yeah, share it out to parents. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, again, Wakelet and Teams work so well with each other. We kind of talked about this one a little bit, adding that tab up to the top of your team, and then you can, um, you know, have that access at all times. It can appear at the top of that channel, and it's just really, really powerful and convenient. So let's talk about some tips. All right. So. You have to like wrap your mind around all of the things that Wakelet has to offer because there's so many things you can do with it. So when you're looking at Wakelet, one of the, I don't know if it's out of the box ways, but I just love the idea of using it for newsletters. Now I have to be honest, there's lots of other ways you can send emails, you can do dojo. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, I, before we start, we mentioned this at the beginning. We're both parents. Yes. Okay. And so take this from two parents let's take the teacher hat off for a second from two parents we would much rather you send us something like this than the worksheet that got lost in the book bag okay go ahead all right so time <laughs> invested i love the idea of using wakelet for newsletters for a couple reasons i hate to admit it but i get more traction from my parents on my instagram account than i often do through an email or things like that and i think it's because it's video it's accessible it's really quick you can embed a shorts video here. You could give like a weekly update or a highlight of what's to come. And then you can add other content. You can add blocks. You can copy it each week. So you can you don't have to redo the whole design all the time. But then you also have that immersive reader feature because I don't I, where we teach, we get students who come from not just one, you know, area with a different language. We I've had Haitian Creole, I've had French, I've had Spanish all in one classroom. And for me to try to figure out a way to like translate everything for everyone is really time consuming. But if I put it into a wakelet and then the, the parents can, I just type things out and the parents can listen to it. That's a game changer. Now, yeah, you may need to teach them at your open house how to do it, but the five minutes that it takes to show them, I've seen the return on investment. I've seen the parents do it, take out their phones and learn. And then they're really getting in, in through that window of your classroom. They're getting to be involved um, because I can only imagine what it would be like to have a child our child's going to middle school next year. And it's going to be the first time he's not with us, right? He's not in the same building. And I'm already like having heart palpitations. I can't imagine sending my child to school, not being able to speak the same language as, as the people who are teaching my child and having to send them every day. So that ability to, to translate something is huge for those parents. And this makes it so simple. Yeah, and if you're thinking to yourself, like, I don't even know where to get started with this. Maybe you're new to Wakelet. <laughs> Don't worry, scan that QR code because that actually is a collection that you can download and it has newsletter templates built for you. Shut the headers then, in yep, there. All you need to go is edit out all of the information so that it fits yourself and you're ready to go. Perfect. Now let's talk about adding collaborators into Wakelet because, you know, let's say that I have a really great idea <laughs> and I wanted to share it with you. So Presuming that, I'm wanting to take it. So that you can <laughs> make it better. Okay, thanks. Okay. So you can do that and you can add collaborators at any time on Wakelet. And what this does is this really opens up the door to the next level. I just, guys, we are in, we're not even in the 21st century anymore. Like we live in a world where things are changing so quickly. And not only do we need to teach our children how to um, collaborate and work with one another, we need to be able to do that as well. And so this simple invite button has a lot of power to it, right? And I love how there's like preferred means of sharing. So you can send a link, you can send a copy code, you can send a QR code, but you can add these collaborators to any collection and then that invites them in to add their, their touch to it. Yeah, and you know, the best part about it too is it automatically saves. 
So if Thank for you. some reason you forget to save, don't worry, it's already done automatically. And then as the uh, the administrator, I think is what the, the correct verbiage is, as the administrator of that particular collection, you always have the ability to go on and edit out anything that you don't want to have. Which is super big because I think there's a lot of fear um, with using technology in the classroom in general. And there's even more fear when you like give kids the control or you put them all in one space together. Um, guys, I've had it, like, I've been talking Civil War and had kids literally drawing guns in the middle of it. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? But the ability to allow them that freedom, obviously to have that digital citizenship and talk about it, but then having that ability to go in and like take anything out that may not fit, you know, whether you have to talk about it or just kind of slightly, I love that because then it's not set in stone. There's room for error. There's room to like fix something. And I think as teachers, we're so scared of like messing up. We're so scared of the kids doing something wrong that we never try. And so I, I really like the ability to, to do that. Yeah. And I think you bring up an interesting point and we kind of brushed up on this, but this is not even, this is not just specific for adults, right? Mm -mm. Like, Kids can also get in this way. We're going to show you a different way that students can get in here in, in a little bit. But um, it, it, if you would like them to get in this way, they can definitely do mm -hmm. it. All right. So speaking of getting your this students This is on, really cool. <laughs> I'm going to let you take the lead because you are so excited about this. I am, yeah. So it is actually even easier now to get your students onto Wakelet. And so there are now... Uh, student accounts in Wakelet. And so all you have to do is follow the uh, the path on this video here. You go on to your account settings, and, or, I'm sorry, your admin panel, and then you import a group. You can do it from Google Classroom. You can do it from Microsoft and Clever. I got to tell you, I did it in Clever and I was shocked. Like last it, minute, yeah. I just and I, I, Yeah, I just was like, you know, let me just give this a shot. My kids were making collections within 10 minutes. It was <laughs> First amazing. Graders. Yeah, it was amazing. And so uh, in the clever is, is awesome because the kids literally just click on, you know, it's a one single sign on. So on. They click on it one time and then they were in, they never had to worry about logging in with any information. It, they couldn't have been, it couldn't have been any simpler. So it was a great way to get kids to, uh, to collaborate like we were just talking about. And I like the idea of calling it student accounts too, because it gives the kids a little bit of ownership, right? Like they have their own account, they have their own space. And we always talk to the kids about being very mindful about whenever you're in anything, what you produce, what you show off to the world, how you, the choices and the things that you decide to do. And so when you have that student account, I just love how it's giving them, it's making them feel like, you know, grown up, like giving yeah. them that little bit of responsibility when really it's nothing that much different um, and, and letting them feel what it's like, because eventually they're going to want it. Like we're, what is our third, almost third grader? I want a YouTube account. I want this. I want that. And just getting them a taste of what it's like and the kind of the responsibility that comes along with it. Well, and the best part about it too, is that with a student account, it's going to save all that, that content, right? So they always can go back and access it again at a later time. You're like so, so. practical. I'm like the like wishy-washy, like, oh, they're, it's self-esteem. He's like, it saves their work. Can you tell like who teaches the little, little yes, ones and who exactly. teaches the older kids? All right, so another tip we want to uh, throw at you guys is a way to organize your content when you're on Wakelet. We kind of talked a little bit about this with that emoji hack, but a lot of times I think that educators skip over this step when they could really be using this to their advantage. And it's organizing your content into sections when you're on your uh, profile page in Wakelet. This is a really easy thing to do, and it's a great way to organize maybe your newsletters or things like that. He is really big on this. I'm getting better. <laughs> um, I give a certain shout out to one of my coworkers. We were just talking about this yesterday. If you're one of those ones that, what do they call it? The type B teachers who like have stuff everywhere. There's nothing wrong with that. We're not ganging up on you, but we're all about efficiency, right? We want to be able to find things. We want to be able to find them quickly and, and use that, use our time in other places. And so being organized does help, especially he is, he is, so oh, good at this, finding things everything. from last year <laughs> and not necessarily doing the same lesson, but like, man, I remember reading this book last year. What did I do with it? What did we do? How could I change it? And he can find things so quickly where I'm like scrolling through all the stuff. And that's beneficial because like you just did a, a lesson recently, but Parker looks up and he did it differently, but he wanted to go back and see what he had done before. And I think organization kind of plays into that. Yeah. And you know, take the couple seconds now that you have when you're doing all of this to organize it because Otherwise, you're like somebody else that we know who is uh, scrambling at the last minute. Or spending their summer organizing but the stuff from the year before. But that's for a different conversation. Yeah, stop. Uh, I just saw someone say this in the comments. I'm sorry, I didn't catch who it was. But uh, organizing into spaces is also really powerful because spaces allows you to have different areas where you can add content. So, for example, like on my account here, I have a space for uh, a breakout, which we're going to be talking about here in a moment. I have space for number talks. I have spaces for my centers, 
basis for parent <clears throat> communication, even how to's all kinds of different content. And I don't want all those to be in the same place because then it's just going to be a jumbed mess organization. Do you see? Faceless yes. phases and a collection. And so, I, and I'm getting there. Yeah. And so it's just a really easy way for you to kind of keep everything together and to share that information out. That's what I was just going to say. Really the, the ultimate goal too is to share it out with other people whether it's people you work with whether it's people in presentation and if you're not organized it's way harder to like share things and 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 again we're looking we look for things that can be integrated we look for things to be differentiated we look for things that can be shared those are the things we look at when we find a new ed tech app and so to us that's a really important feature now i know that a lot of people next year are getting ready for this i'm so excited for but this but this is a great idea. I'm, I'm not sure who came up with this first. This was not our idea. So I apologize if this is your idea, but shout out to you if it was. This is a great way to manage your student portfolios. Now that you know how to have student accounts, why not let the students be the ones that curate that information and collect those artifacts? Let them build up their own student portfolio so that way they have a full year's worth of learning that they can go back to and they can share. I was just gonna say like, I Okay, I'm like more cutesy one, so obviously mine would probably be on like a really cute card the kids are holding with their QR code or whatever it is, but give the parents those QR codes. Put it on a magnet for the refrigerator. There's so many really creative ways you could do this, but share that share that um, portfolio at the beginning of the year, or actually, you want a tip? Don't share it the very first quarter. I yes. never, I always start them and I let, get my kids used to how to do it. I, I teach them how to add things. I wait until there's several things on the portfolio then I share it because otherwise you're going to have those parents who are like, why isn't anything on the portfolio yet? I, and it's just stressful. So teacher hack, start the portfolio, get it started, then share it, but share it on something like a magnet or something that um, the parents won't lose and they can use. And then teach the kids how to add it, have them be their own advocates, have them advocate for what they want, what they don't want. You know what? You can take things off of it. Yeah. So if they like do something and they're like, oh, I really didn't like that. Or my mom and I talked about it. Can I change it? Can I add something else to it? Sure. Of course you can go right ahead. Like the, the, the fluidity of Wakelet is what makes it powerful. And I just, I love students being able to, to, to be in charge of their own learning. I feel so often we're, we're training our kids to just fill this out, answer this, do this within these hours. And, and we really need um, to teach them, I don't want to say accountability, but that that desire to to that drive, you know. Yeah, and I just think it's so cool that you could have a, a whole collection where you're constantly adding to throughout the year. But on top of that, you're you're the kids are are in charge of that, right? So they're the ones who are adding everything, and the parents then have continuous access to it. And so, if you really want to take it to the next level, you can share them within the classroom. Maybe not to where other kids obviously can edit each other's, but they can still see it and they can say, wow, you know what? My friend over there, they thought that was a really important assignment. I want to make sure that I do really well when I turn mine in as well. And so it almost acts like a classroom. Or you could feed out of it too. You could have portfolios and then you, you have a, a, they collaborate and they all add something from their portfolio from the quarter that right. they're really proud right. of. Um, I also like it too, because especially if you use ed tech in the classroom, and you're doing a lot of things. I'm just trying to think of off the top of my head. We use Flipgrid, we use Bunsy, we use Wakelet, we use Adobe, we use all these different programs. And guys, it stays on the computer screen. If you don't share that out, if you don't get that content out and students know that someone is looking at that content, um, they're not gonna work on it. They're, yeah. It's not gonna have that importance. And so the ability to have that digital stuff shared, I mean, I just sent homework portfolios this year and here's all the papers and here's all the things, but how I wish I would have done a portfolio of all of their digital things too. And so next year, that's a goal for me to kind of have, have both, you know, you don't have to go all one way or all the other. Yeah, and they make it so easy to do mm -hmm. all that too. Uh, so this is what I am currently knee, knee neck knee thing. I just saw someone say something about primary students too and like really little littles. Yeah. in in the chat and so here uh, here so we go what i am we're still in school believe it or not and um our last day is this coming friday but okay. we are we are currently trying to finish up our last writing assignment for the year which just happens to be research projects and so we try to keep it relative to animals that live here in southwest florida and so uh in order to do that we have to differentiate out the different types of animals that we have. And so not only is student A going to get to pick which animal they want to do, but they're also getting to pick the content 
or I'm picking the content that they're going to see because student A might need to be challenged, whereas student B might need a little bit more help. Mm -hmm. And so Wakelet makes this really easy because like you said, you can just duplicate the, uh, the collections and then you can add the content or you know edit it accordingly. Well, what I love too is guys, I'm, I teach fourth graders and still sometimes teaching them how to find reliable resources. We have so many amazing subscriptions and our kids still like have trouble finding it, what to search for. And there's a time and place for that, don't get me wrong, but there's also a time and place where, like, look, I found all of these things and they're really good, especially when you're six years old. Yeah. Start here. And and I, when I was watching, you know, this video loop, you know, there's videos, there's pictures, there's talks that we had in the classroom that I could snap a picture of really quick of the discussion that we had either in our small group or, and I'm gonna throw that in there too. You know, again, that fluidity of changing what you're working on in the moment. Oh, we talked about these things. Let's regroup. Let's go keep looking for them. But let me put them on the wakelet so you don't forget what we talked about. Yeah. And you know, the other thing that's uh, important to note here, and as you're seeing this, notice that this is all in the, the list up and down. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily in the mood. And the reason why is because you can see that I've got it organized in sections. So if you're a primary teacher, you know, you might want to think about that you, where you have, you know, your most important content on the top and then your least important, I guess you would. I was going to start clicking. Yeah. I mean, as you can see, like it's a pictures, but um, on that last slide, you can see that's actually something that the kids have added. And those were burning questions or questions that were really almost like ungoogleable questions that they, they really wanted to know um, that they couldn't necessarily find in the, um, the uh, content that was provided for them. So that's just one more. And if you're step. an intermediate teacher, this is where you could add your PDFs. This is where you could add your links yes. to articles. It doesn't just have to be pictures and videos. This is for a primary example, but you could add on the level of difficulty. I love starting with one or two things on my wakelets. And then the next day I add one more thing. And then the next day I add one more thing because if I add 17 things the first day, it's almost overwhelming. And the kids just spend their whole time like looking at all the things. But if I just add a new item or two to my um, collection each day, then they're motivated to read or watch whatever I put on that day because they know that something new is coming and it helps them kind of manage their time into what to look at. So that's another tip you could do because you can keep adding to it. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, there's, it's just so powerful, right? And so we love how you can continue, like you said, to add that content, especially with something like this, where it needs to be very fluid because as the kids are working, they may come across different things that maybe they need to research more. Maybe they have questions about. I know this isn't on the presentation, but it made me think of this. Like Genius Hour, my kids um, were doing podcasting this year. And it was kind of like a mixture of Genius Hour. And I had a student who wanted to do his podcast on anime. Okay, well, if you've ever gone to like Girlier, like there's nothing on anime. And it's really hard. And so this is a great way I could have, I can add links for him. And then as I find things and as I preview things, I can continue to add those things on anime for him. So he would have that place and that space to keep looking for. You know, when there's yeah. those things that are really hard for the kids too, and that you may not have all of the resources right away, you can continually add to them. Yeah, that, that's a good point actually. So you don't necessarily just have to use things like YouTube. You can have your paid resources available within that Wakelet collection. Now there may be a login procedure that goes along with that, but- huh, But you know what? You can put it at the top above where the, the, the resource was, just type in the text. Here's how you log in guys. So it's really easy to do that as well. Now um, this, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to change that at the top. So the- uh, But look, animals, was yeah, it was, so it just was a animals. different way, a little bit more intermediate. So this was, this was actually yours. Yeah. This was using Buncee with Wakelet, but in a slightly different way. So I actually created, this was during, the very beginning of the pandemic when we were literally like just trying to float and trying to figure out what to do. I created the Buncee. I linked all of the things in. I asked a specific question for the kids. So again, I had that immersive reader to read to them. And if you, this looks familiar, that's a shorts video. So the very beginning of my wake, it was a video that I made with the shorts integration, explain what we were doing, where we were going. I then linked um, well, one of the links. There's all sorts of different links to different articles, different videos for them. And then I asked them, why is the Everglades such an important place? That's very close to where you live. Um, and so it's a big part of our science standards. But again, you can, it, I just like this example because it shows some of the integrations all together. You got the Flipgrid, you got the fun seat, you got the immersive reader. Um, and then that Flipgrid shorts would lead them to a video that I actually had them do. And I don't want you to look at this and think to yourself like, this looks like over the top difficult. It's not. Th that Buncee presentation looks amazing, but how long did that take you? Honestly. 15 minutes. Yeah, so in all of that is, is, is branching, right? The hyperlinking out of that image 
is probably the thing that took the longest because you had to find all the links. All the resources. And I, again, I didn't make all the resources you could have. You could have linked them to things that you actually made, like a web, you know, a, a doc. But what I like about it is if I make that one for this week and my all my four teammates make ones for different weeks, then I have over a month's worth of activity that I could have used in the same format or the same, you know, I like the routine of it. Um, again, but like I said, this was week two of pandemic teaching and I needed something that was fluid, that was easy, that was familiar to my kids. So they were familiar with Bunsy, they're familiar with Flipgrid, they're familiar with Wakelet. So to be able to integrate them all together, it was familiar, it was comfortable. And the, the coolest part about this, and I don't know if you mentioned this, but I apologize if you did, is that we did talk about this before, I know, that, that Bunsy, you can swap out those links and that's still a live embed, mm -hmm. right? So if you are working in the background and you swap out those links maybe for a, Oh, Less this link doesn't on. work or, oh, I found something better. Uh, yeah, I don't have to go back. Fresh. <laughs> I don't have to go back to my wakelet. It just automatically fixes it automatically itself. Doesn't. So that's really powerful. Oh, so good. Because guys, be real. Sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes things don't work the way that we think they're supposed to. And it's okay. Don't be fearful. You have that ability to, to fix it. Yeah. So um, this is uh, this is another mm -hmm. choice board, um, an idea that was yours. And yeah, you just, again, genius hours, choice boards, things that you can work on. You can change your screen, you can change your slides, you can add those things, especially these are, most of these are Buncees. Um, and we just love that because they're that live and in, in, in bed and come on, like the kids just love it. They just love Buncee. They love when things move. They love when there's the animation. Um, I love the idea of even like letting your kids create their own Buncees that would be about something like a genius hour and creating your own choice boards of, a, of the kids work. You know, and then letting them explore the work of each other, um, you know, kind of like that age old, like, let's make some questions and make a kahoot together or whatever. Do it, do it in Wakelet. Make some kind of buncy, make some kind of presentation, embed them all in, have those live embeds and let the kids go in and when they have center time, look at the work of their friends and their classmates and see the cool research they did. I just, there's so many, so many things you could do. And I think the key is the student choice because the kids are going to be much, much more likely to want to work and do well when they have the choice as to what they're doing instead of you just saying, hey, let's do this Monday, let's do this Tuesday. Yes, I'm just looking at the chat. Yes, there is a free version of Buncee um, that you can use. It, it has some restrictions on how many you can create and how the students can log in. But as a teacher, like if you want to do that idea where you create the assignment and they live in, you could totally do that with the free version of Buncee to get started. And I would recommend sign up for it, play around with it this summer, um, and then you can go from there for the next school year. Yeah, and there's so many different ways to do this. And there's so many great ideas coming to the chat too. So make sure you're checking out those ideas because some of those are awesome. Yeah. I like that ancient Greece, uh, that ancient Greece idea. I think that was Janice, if I said that right. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Um, so you can also do simple things. It doesn't have to be these big over-the-top lessons. It can be something simple like your vocabulary activities. Uh, you know, in first grade, we really focus on vocabulary terms before we read books. And so it's really important for us as teachers to make sure that the kids understand how those can be related in their daily lives. And so we really try to do that. And Wakelet makes that really easy. What I like about this too is that I think sometimes we tackle projects all at once. And so I'm looking at this thinking, okay, let's give the kids maybe a space or a, a couple collections of words. And in week one, we just say, hey guys, like, let's go ahead and see if we can find a picture or let's, let's define it. Let's find the definition or let's learn how to say it. Let's see if we can find a picture. But then maybe we revisit those same ones the next week. And then we say, okay guys, now your, your directions are to write in a sentence or to, you know, if you have older kids, it could be, you know, um, give me a non-example, example, those kinds of things. But you could revisit those. So if your kids are in one place in the year and, and something might be too difficult, you could just have them start there and add to it. Or this is where you could differentiate. You could say, okay, this group, you're going to find the word, find a picture, find a, uh, a sentence. And then I'm gonna copy that and take out the add a sentence. I'm just gonna ask these kids to find a picture. You know, I'm gonna differentiate that. But I just love the idea of using it in different subjects, not just for curating and holding spaces, but for the kids to go in and demonstrate their understanding of something. I just really like how the kids were, this because this was an example from our class, um, and this was a great- <laughs> I love example. the word. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love the, the ability for t kids to find things from Unsplash, right, that are safe. And mm -hmm. also, um, you know, then to be able to add the information after the fact. So yes, it, the word was humid, but as you can see in the picture here, that they had to explain why they thought that picture was relatable to that particular word. And so um, it just made vocabulary 
way more engaging and fun rather than just saying, what is this word? Well, and how much fun too would it be if you like added on to it and like one child had the word human and they wrote the sentence. It rains a lot in the jungle, so it's human. And then like other kids could go under and collaborate under and add to the sentence or add, make a paragraph or continue what that one child did with their word. And maybe each week someone's in charge of like yeah. the word or each kid's have their, I just think there's so many different ways that you could have fun and have the kids doing the project and collaborating and revisiting it. Yeah, and it sounds like a lot, but it's really not. No, and I'm like, some of these things I'm thinking as we're going, like, oh my gosh, you could do this and you could do this. So the ability to go back and see what you did and have that organized, it just yeah, all comes together. That's awesome. Speaking of being organized go and for coming it. together, you can also use this as a team. Mm -hmm. right with your fellow educators in the building um we were scrambling as i'm sure all of you were as well when remote learning went down and one of the biggest things that we thought about was how are our students going to be able to use math manipulatives that's going to be a big challenge and so we spent some time as a team we went ahead and we looked all over the internet scour scavenging different corners and we found as many different uh, websites that the kids could use for digital manipulatives as possible. And the way we were able to deliver those to their students is through Wakelet. And so it made things really easy. And now we were able to organize that in a way where the students could have access. I'll have to, to share Wakelet. this again. I shared this on our social media. It was funny, the virtual school supplies, how funny it was, but it really wasn't funny. Um, and so it was just a neat way. You could do this. It doesn't have to be math manipulatives. It could be all sorts of things. It could be great vocabulary places. It could be places to find, you know, good clip art and, you know, free images. How, however you decide to, what you decide to curate doesn't really matter. Um, but I just, I, I think, I just love it. And this is not the normal stream. So this is a different format too. I like that. Yeah, so we did that on purpose too so we could continue to add stuff. But, and again, this, this was all collaboratively. So, you know, you have people that are adding different types of content at the same time together and it just builds this. It'd be really cool if we did like a space and then you put like different by grade level or by primary. Yeah, you could like, do that. you could even get more organized. Now I know that you did it slightly differently though. Yes, so I really love the idea of trying to find ways to collaboratively plan, collaboratively plan with teachers that is efficient. Um, my team this year is amazing and I, let's be real, you get a lot of that like, hey, look what I found, you text message or you email. So we actually combined this with um, a live document. It could be in PowerPoint, it could be in Google, wherever it is, it doesn't really matter. And, and what we did is we had weeks planned out and we would all go in and type different ideas and things, but then we would also share these Wakelet collections per standards with whatever we were teaching and reading or math. And then everyone had access to this Wakelet. And as we found ideas, as we found videos, activities, PDFs, papers in our files, whatever it was, we added them to these Wakelets and then you have this wakelet of everything we found for place value, everything that we found for poetry, everything that we found for, you know, myths and fables. And guys, we just sat back last week as a team when we were going through our last couple weeks of planning. And one of my teammates was like, oh my gosh, like we literally had every idea that we planned out and used or didn't use within <laughs> our calendar and our wakelet. We're going to be able to have this for next year. And I was like, I know how amazing is this? Right. And this could be your, 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 you and your friend, you know, it could be you and your team. It could be you and someone that lives on the other side of the world that both teach fourth grade. I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be, um, it, it could be whatever you want it to be. I did go in and I will be honest and transparent. I did go in and make all of the little tiles at the front. So they kind of matched. Um, it helped me know which one was math, which one was reading, um, science, social studies, and our district gave things color coded too. So it was nice to have things um, in that color coding. Um, but yeah, I just I just love the idea of collaboratively planning with your team, not just kids learning how to collaboratively plan with each other. Yeah, and I have to say that looks really really slick with those sections in there, Mrs. Merrill. Thanks. I'm working yeah. on my organization. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, keeping it organized in the sections, obviously, this is why we mentioned it earlier because it can be so beneficial when you come to things like this. And again, so, you can add to them every year. You can take things off. You can put things on. Like, how many of you guys have done a lesson and you tried it and you're like, oh, that was not so good? Delete from the cure, right? You don't need to keep it. Um, and then, how many of you may be like me where you're totally brain dead right now and then come mid July, you start searching for things? Oh, that looks really fun. That looks really cool. And but I don't do it for four more months, like, right? Ha start saving it now. Yes, there's Pinterest, I love Pinterest, but this is so much more accessible. Everybody can be together, everybody can add to it, everybody can share, and um, I just, and again, those links never change. So if you embed them somewhere else on a curriculum map or on a team planning, and you add and change, they're still gonna stay the same. Yeah. 
Now, just like so your cool. team can collaborate, your students can collaborate, especially when it comes to those student accounts that now Weekly has. And so this was a very the very first time that I used the student accounts. With what, what age kids? Uh, this was six and seven year olds. Okay. So remember how I said how I was able to create their accounts using Clever and they were doing it 10 minutes later? This is that activity. <laughs> so I had them do number talks. So if you're not sure what number talks is, basically you give uh, a number, let's just say the number, I think I picked was 25 here, and the kids have to show different ways to make that number. Now, the, the key here is that you're not just showing one way, you're showing as many different ways as possible. <laughs> I know. So as you can see, some kids really went above and beyond and try to share as many different ways as they could. Some just tried to rocket fire them off as quickly as possible and then they kept on posting more than one. I didn't really care. There was so many awesome responses that are happening so quickly that it was just awesome to see. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can also take it up a level and you can say, guys, if you see that there is a uh, uh, an answer that's come through that you were thinking of, you can't repost it. And so that Ooh. makes them think a little bit more about, well, maybe how can I break that down? So like, let's just say, for example, if I use 20 plus five, which equals 25, and I saw that one come up and I'm like, oh, now I gotta think of a way to break that up. <laughs> so now I've got to do 10 plus 10 plus five, right? And so really kind of expanding their knowledge with the facts there was-, was 20 awesome. plus 20 minus 20 plus, oh yeah. gosh, I love first graders. But <laughs> again, this probably wasn't necessary in math because it's math and it's numbers, but look at all those immersive reader icons. Like, oh, the teacher in me is just loving like, the ability to sit and listen, especially if, you know, I'm a primarily a reading teacher, a writing teacher. So whenever I do collaborations, a lot of times they are wordier. There's a little bit more, especially with fourth graders. I just love this idea of being able to listen to it and hear it and again, make it accessible. Guys, it could yeah. translate it. Like what if I said, oh, the Everglades are so important. And I'm talking about why they're important. And then it translates it. It's like, it's like what we used to do with a Padlet, which there's nothing, I still use Padlet, but now it's translated, guys, and it's curated. Like, oh, I'm just, well, I and, love Wake Club. And, and another it's magical. Thing, another thing that you can do here is you can, you'll can you notice that there's a few thumbs up there. Uh, that was, I wanted the kids to go through, and if they thought that the answer was correct, give it a thumbs up. Or you could also say, like, if you're using this example, if you had that same equation that maybe somebody else posted and you're not allowed to post it. And some monitoring. Thumbs up. Yeah, so kind of monitoring and seeing you know, what exactly uh, their friends are, are thinking, what, what they're doing. Okay, I'm gonna address this. Is Wakelet more useful than Padlet and how are they different? Um, I still use Padlet. I use Padlet a lot. Um, it has a live embed too and a curation. I would say number one, hands down, how they're different is Immersive Reader. There is no ability in Padlet really to have anything read to you. You can add text, you can add video, but you can do that in, in Wakelet as well. Um, and so for me, um, also with Padlet, if you don't pay for it, you can only add, I think it's like five. Um, with Wakelet, you can do this as many as you want. It's free, you can add as many as you want. And so I would say um, that, that for me, those are just two of the main reasons that Wakelet is going to be a little bit more useful than Padlet. Um, Padlet also doesn't integrate as well into some of these other programs that we've talked about like Wakelet does. Yeah. So. Lots of different ideas here when it comes to collaboration, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, I do want to share this before we wrap things up and we'll answer some questions. This was an activity that I just did yesterday. And and, and we <laughs> like to like do our presentations where we start simple and we tend to like get more intricate. So sometimes people leave our presentations and they're like, ah, oh my gosh, like mind blown, so many things. <laughs> if this is too much, it's okay. It was kind of a, a lot for me when he was explaining what he was going to do. I was like, are you, what, huh? It took me a couple of minutes to wrap my head around it. But we had to share it because we thought it was so much fun and was such a creative and unique idea. But don't get overwhelmed. So, you, we, you you will have the resources to revisit later. Yeah. A, lot of, <laughs> a lot of people have done breakouts with Wake Club before. But we, what we wanted to try to do is we want to try to integrate things like Buncee and Flipgrid also within that same exact breakout. And so what we did was we used branching within a wakelet, so linking and hyperlinking within the wakelet. Organization. Organization. Need to be organized for this one. Yes, for sure. And so, uh, you know, everything was hyperlinked. So um, this was a mystery where the kids were a detective and they had to go about solving the case. And so there were questions that were on the wakelet collections. And in some instances, there was an embed of a Buncee presentation where there were clues left throughout a classroom and the kids had to go through using the zoom in and try to figure out what the clue was giving. Oh. Um, and so the thing that's important to note here is as the kids work through this activity, 
they were supposed to write down their answers on a separate sheet of paper. And so doing so- Or on the table. Or I mean, on the table, on. yeah. And so doing so then gave them the code to unlock the final challenge, which was a Flipgrid topic. And so this was a new Flipgrid uh, group that we created where the, uh, the code to get into the group was just the answers from all of the challenges prior. So let me get this straight. So they went to their first challenge and it looks like you had it nice and big. Again, immersive reader raised all the questions to them, which I could totally see kids wanting to listen to it again and, and revisit. And then they had to click the link as yes or no, which took them to another wakelet, which was where they found out if they were right or if they were wrong. Correct. Okay, so they're so, wrong, they could go back and keep working. Right, so if they were wrong, I did have something on there that says like, your response has been noted, you know, and you have to go back and try again. And so that would hyperlink them back to the original, the, or not the original, the challenge that they were on. Um, and so it was really cool because as you can see, like in that middle picture there, the word Flipgrid was all of a sudden start to be spelled out as they would answer the questions correctly. So they knew exactly how many answers there were going to be and how many challenges there were going to be, how close they were to solving the case. And so uh, it was really, really fun. Now, if you're thinking to yourself like, this sounds amazing, but I don't know if I can wrap my head around this. We do have an entire <laughs> blog post that we just put up that walks you through each step. You can thank me for that because after he's <laughs> finished talking, I was like, you're going to have to A, make a template so everyone else can use it because that sounds really confusing. And B, you're going to need to um, write this in words so people like me can like go back and watch it and redo it. Yeah, and so um, it's it's all broken down step by step for you, including where we even started with the with the original idea of how the links will work. And if that even appears to be too much, don't worry because guess what? We also have all the collections available for you that you can just go ahead and add to your own Wakelet account, and then you can edit out whatever you want. If you want to leave it the same way you can, the only thing you will have to edit out, obviously, are the Bunsy link and probably yeah, like the topic. links. With, and, and again, too, if you do something like this, highly recommend using apps you already work with. Our kids are so fluent in Buncee, they're so fluent in, in Flipgrid. We pick things that they already know how to use. It probably wouldn't go as well if you just threw in a whole bunch of new things and they had to learn all of the things at once on top of it being a linked challenge. So um, yes, like like adding adding things in that your kids are already familiar with will, will help with this feeling so compounded, I think. Yeah, and so this was just a really fun way to kind of cap off the year and you know end the year on a high note. It's funny, you know, we oftentimes we find ourselves struggling at the last minute to try to keep our kids engaged. And this was just a really easy way for us to go about keeping them interested. And I mean, as you can see, they're still working on math and there's three days off of school. I, I think I'm doing pretty well. I, I think you're doing great. <laughs> So thank you guys so much. We really appreciate you guys spending your morning with us. Morning, afternoon, depending on where you depending are. Depending on where you are, it's yeah. morning. It's a late morning for us. Yeah. But please don't let this be the only time that we connect with you. We love meeting new people, sharing with people, learning from other people, especially with some of the people we see where everyone is located. We we strive to be as global as we can, and we would love to connect with you, whether that's um, going to sign up for our mailing list and um, you know, joining us there where we can share ideas and connect with you, whether it's on social media, we are on, we are on pretty much any form of social media that you can be on. We are on uh, Instagram, we're on Twitter, or even on TikTok, but don't go there if you really want like the really good stuff. <laughs> like that's a little bit more fun. Um, that's a little more video based, but we, we, we do love to connect. We'd love to connect with you on your bookshelf too. We have, um, two books, uh, the interactive class and Flipgrid in the interactive class, which focuses a little bit more on Flipgrid. Um, where we we share more lessons, ideas, our our philosophies, or you know our pedagogy. Um, but I think you had something about our mailing list that you want to tell people. Yeah. So um, real, first off, really quickly, I'm just seeing now for the first time in the chat. There's so All many of our people. friends that are here. Oh my goodness! Thank thank you guys so much for for hanging out with us. Lori's here. Uh, who else did I see? They're going uh, so quickly. Yeah, they're going so fast. Paul, uh, Lainey, here. Thank you so oh my goodness. Much. Uh, Callum, always awesome. You know, thank you. So there's so many awesome people that are here, including you watching this right now. Thank you for taking that time. Um, if you do think that some of these ideas are appealing and you're interested in, co in contacting us and keeping in touch with us, there is a QR code there. And that QR code is uh, a straight link to a sign up page for our email list. And we try to push out new ideas once a week, share different things. I want to give away. I know you want to give a book away. So I want to give like like more than one book away. You want to give them more? Yeah. So if you want to sign up for our mailing list, on top of like being signed up for all of our wonderful things, 
I can track who signs up and I want to give away some books. So I will send out an email to everyone who subscribes and then I will let you know who wins the giveaway. I always like to give lots of books away. We'll see how many Mr. Merrill lets me give away. <laughs> and um, I will contact you and you can pick whichever book you'd like and we'd be happy to send it to you um, um, for you to enjoy. Is there, I wanna go into the chat and make sure there's no other questions that we can answer before our time is up. Let's see, if you added your student roster, do you have access to edit their wakelets? Um, yes, I believe you do. Although I'm sure that the friends at Wakelet probably could answer that a little bit better than I can. Um, it's all very new to me as we've we just, just started, started playing with yeah. it. So, um, you know, it's, it, it is a new thing, but it was uh, very, very engaging for them. So, um, is there a free version? Uh, a Buncee, Buncee? Yes, there is. There is. Yep. It's a, it's a limited version, but it still oh, is free. How could you share a portfolio on a magnet? All right. This is awesome. We have this in our book interactive class. We always give magnets to our parents at the beginning of the year with like, um, like our in information and stuff. But what you could do is you could take that QR code. And however, whatever size you make it, whether it's on cardboard and laminate it, whether you make it into a real magnet, put that QR code and send it home with them. You could hot glue a magnet on the back of it. It doesn't have to be yeah. professionally made. And then they could put it on their refrigerator and then that way they could always go back and, and look at the portfolio. Heather, thank you so much. We really appreciate the comments. Thank she you. Says, Love our books too, thank oh, you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry, they're going so fast. We're oh my goodness. <laughs> Elizabeth Poole, hello everybody. Priscilla, what's up Priscilla? Hey everybody, we are so excited and just wanna stress again how much we love Wakelet and the magic that it really does allow you to have as a teacher. Um, we are number one about having fun with our students and just empowering them and just instilling that love for learning so that they want to pursue it in whatever form or fashion they do when they grow up. and. Um, Wakelet loves teachers, Wakelet loves education. And so we just are so honored. Um, and yes, thank you. You thank can you, edit Jacob. your student collections on the admin panel. We figured how could Wakelet not give teachers accessibility to access and change, yeah. of course. So, I mean, I think there's one kind of overlying theme here and it's that it's about the students, mm -hmm. right? And so that's why we're all here. That's why Wakelet's having community week. That's what their goal is with all these different features. You know, it's student focus. And so, we are just so thankful that you guys are here and we're thankful for Wakelet for being the tool that it is and you know making this accessible for all of our students. It's been really, really powerful. So thank yeah, you guys. Thank you for joining so us. Much. If you have any questions about anything, please by all means reach out to us with our website or on social media. We can't wait to reach out and connect with you all. This has been amazing. It's been a great and, and hour. And everyone keeps saying thank you so much for your energy. Well, there's never a lack of energy here, but the energy <laughs> here with everyone, please don't Stop tuning in. Wakelet has an entire week of presentations and things going on. And I'm sure Amy can attest to more of them. But thank you so much for giving us this hour to share our love of Wakelet. Thank you, guys. Oh, my goodness. That was um, absolutely incredible. It was so wonderful. You guys are like ideas factories. There were so <laughs> many ideas coming up. You guys and being shared in the chat. Um, you'll have to have a look back through them because there were so many really cool ideas being shared, um, which was so wonderful to see. Um, I, I think the thing that stood out is what that you went through so many of the integrations that uh, Wakela has and you can work alongside. And that's one of the things we really try to um, emphasize is that, you know, Wakelet works alongside side a lot of the tools that you're already using so um it's great to be able to to incorporate them into each other um, and use those together as well so you you highlighted that wonderfully i think there was lots that people didn't even know you could do as well which was so cool to see so um and highlighting student accounts um I'm so glad you found it so so easy to, to use. Um, it's something the team have obviously been working on and we just wanna make it even easier for you guys to be using uh, Wakelet with your students. So um, yeah, fantastic sessions. Like Thank I said, you. you'll have to look through the, the comments because um, they were wonderful. I know you were sort of jumping back and things like that, but um, yeah everyone's loved your energy and enthusiasm so thank you both so much um but yeah as you guys said um there's going to be lots more session throughout the week um we'll be sharing the link for the wake click community week um page so please check out our upcoming sessions um and we have been sharing our link to uh the certificates that you'll get from this session as well so you'll get a certificate and a stamp so fill out that form and uh, we'll send those out to you um along with the resources and things from the session so you'll be able to um, follow the Merrills and uh, go onto their site and everything like that as well. So we'll send all of that out. But thank you guys so much. Um, it has been absolutely brilliant. Um, and yeah, fantastic to have you on. Yeah, thank brilliant. you so much. Thank you Keep excited so for the rest much. Of the week. Yes, good luck. And thank you.
we can't wait to see everything that's coming. <laughs> yes, brilliant. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us as well. Any last word words from you guys? No, I, like I said, I keep seeing the comments come in, um, asking for templates and things. Go to our website, check out our blog, all of the gamification, all of those things we shared are linked there. So um, it's easier probably than throwing them in the chat last minute. Oh, I've just seen a question coming up about getting your certificate. Yeah, we'll be sending those out in the next hour or so. So as soon as you get that form in, we'll get them out to you. So, um, yeah, we're we'll so, share that in the, the chat awesome again. Love it. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. We'll we'll leave the, the chat going for a bit and uh, and jump off. But yeah, thank you. And thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.